Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all of our dads out there and to those who uh, chose to take on that uh, responsibility. Um, you play such an important role in the lives of so many. We are thanking God for you today and we're praying for your continued strength and wisdom and spiritual growth. And uh, we have good news today. Um, on Sunday, July 5th, Canton and Alloway United Methodist Churches will worship in person. Uh, Canton will meet at 9 o'clock. Alloway will meet at 11 o'clock. Um, we will still have um, an online sermon. Um, I'll let you know what time uh, that will be. I'm not sure of all the details. Um, and there'll be more details to come as far as what is needed from you. But we're really excited. We're looking forward to this time when we can be together in person although we're thankful that we could worship together um, in this way. Um, today, uh, during our prayer time, um, as always, I would encourage you to share your prayer requests with us. Um, share them uh, via comments. Um, if you feel uncomfortable with that, um, I understand. Um, I'll give time during the prayer time when you can bring those requests to God. You know, he um, tells us to come to him boldly. And, uh, and so I would encourage you to do that today. Um, pray especially for those uh, children who... Uh, might not be in contact with their dads, uh, might be in a broken relationship with their dads, that uh, God would uh, bring healing there. So uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. Lord, uh, we thank you for your hand, uh, your magnificence, uh, that we can see all around us. Lord, uh, we hear it uh, in the birds. Lord, uh, we see you in the flowers. Lord, uh, we witness your greatness, Lord, as we watch squirrels scamper along the ground. Uh, Lord, uh, we have confidence, Lord, in that uh, your word says that if you know when one sparrow falls, Lord, how much more you care for us. Um, as we watch the sparrows fly and swoop in the sky, Lord, it reminds us of your great love for us. And Lord, uh, today we come to you. Um, some of us had great weeks 
Lord, some of us had difficult weeks. Lord, but all of us had times during this week, Lord, uh, where we fell short of what you wanted for us. Lord, either by the things that we did or by the things that we didn't do. Lord, by the things that we said or by the things that we didn't say. So this morning, Lord, we come to you asking your forgiveness. And Lord, thankful that you will forgive us, Lord, if we confess our sins to you. And uh, Lord, today we pray for all the dads out there. Lord, uh, we thank you, Lord, for their presence in our lives. Lord, I thank you for my dad. I thank you uh, for my father-in-law. Lord, I thank you for my husband, who was a godly dad. Lord, uh, we pray also for those men who made the choice uh, to be a dad in the life of a child or even an adult, Lord. Although they didn't technically have that responsibility, God, we pray for each one today. God, we ask that you would help them to continue to seek you, Lord, to live godly lives, um, that you would give them, your, give them your wisdom and your discernment. Lord, this is a difficult world um, in which to be a man. So God, uh, please give each one what they need, Lord for the monumental task that is before them. Lord, uh, we continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones, Lord, who are grieving. Lord, uh, we pray for those who are sick, that you would bring healing to them. And Lord, at this time, we ask that you would hear the prayers of your people. And Lord, uh, today on Father's Day, we remember the Father, Lord, who, um, who humbly and lovingly uh, welcomed his son back, who we call the prodigal son. Uh, God, we thank you for fathers who are forgiving. And Lord, uh, we thank you most of all for your forgiveness for us. God, uh, we continue to pray for our leaders. Lord, we ask also that you would touch them. Lord, turn, cause them to turn to you. Lord, for those leaders, whether they be at the national level, the state level, um, in our communities. Lord, for those who know you. Lord, we ask that uh, they would speak up for you. Lord, that they would live lives of integrity. And Lord, we continue to pray for those uh, like the prodigal son who are wandering. God, we ask that you would bring them home to you. And Father, we ask that you would be present with us now. Lord, uh, in the reading of your word, Lord, uh, in the message today, God, I ask that your word would be in my mouth. And uh, Lord, the greatest desire of our heart is to love you more, to follow you, to bring glory to you, Lord, and to enlarge your kingdom. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
So again, happy Father's Day. You know, I read an article uh, this week that pointed out that we sometimes celebrate Father's Day and Mother's Day differently in the church. You know, when it's Mother's Day, we list the many sacrifices that mothers have made, and we're thankful for the love and nurturing that they provide for us. But when Father's Day rolls around, sometimes all we do is talk about how dads need to step up to the plate. And I realized that that's true. You know, dads, we need you. Sons need you. Daughters need you. And I'm so happy that many of the younger fathers are playing a very active role in the lives of their children. And we just thank you for all you do. Um, and as I said before, you know, we're thankful for those men who see a need and rise to the occasion. They see a child or maybe even an adult who needs a man in his or her life, and they make the decision to be a dad to that child. You know, the dad of a friend of mine married her mom when she was the single mother of five little children, and he loved each one as if they were his own because to him they were. Well, today we are going to look at a man in the Bible who was one of those men who chose to be a father. A man named Mordecai chose to become a dad when he adopted his cousin Hadassah, who we will remember um, becomes uh, Queen Esther. If you would like to follow along with me in your Bible, we are going to make our way through the book of Esther. Um, Esther's in the Old Testament, right after uh, Nehemiah. And this Old Testament book is interesting for many reasons, but for one, because God's name is never mentioned in the book. Now, although he's not mentioned, his sovereignty and his providence are apparent on each page. Now, some of you might remember that uh, we spent quite some time following Nehemiah in his work in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem with those Jews who'd returned to um, Jer Jerusalem after uh, the exile to Babylon. But some Jews chose to stay where they were, uh, rebuilding their lives and their homes. So as we turn to this first chapter of Esther, we are introduced to um, some interesting characters. Um, first, we meet King Xerxes. Now, he is king of Persia, and in the beginning of the book, he is in the midst of this six-month party, um, according to verse 4, and he is doing this to display the wealth and the splendor of his kingdom, and when that party's over, he decided that he would host a banquet for seven days. And while he did that for the men, Queen Vashti, another important character in verse 9, um, gave a banquet for the women. Now, the scripture tells us that when he was in high spirits, so to speak, after drinking for seven days, he commanded the eunuchs to bring in Queen Vashti so he could display her beauty. But unbelievably, the queen refused. And King Xerxes was furious. So this led to Vashti being deposed as the queen and royal decrees being sent to all the providences saying that every man should be the ruler of his own household. So a new queen needed to be found. So a search was made for new virgins for the king. 
and commissioners went to every province. Now Xerxes ruled a vast area from India in the west to Ethiopia in the east. And um, they searched for beautiful girls. And these lovely girls would be brought back to the palace and they would be given all types of beauty treatment for a year, which many of the women in New Jersey um, would appreciate at this time. And the one woman, this one beauty, this elegant woman who pleased Xerxes would become queen. So um, in chapter two now, in verse five, we're introduced to another character and his name is Mordecai. And we read, now there was in the citadel of Susa, that's the palace, of the tribe, a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin named Mordecai, son of Jer, the son of Shemai, the son of Kish, who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, among those taken captive with Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, whom he had brought up because she had neither father nor mother. This young woman, who was also known as Esther, had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Mordecai had taken care of her, had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother had died. So we don't really know that much about Mordecai other than he was a Jew who had been exiled. And rather than going back to Jerusalem, he stayed where he was, and he chose to become a father to Esther. And you know, good dads keep deciding to be fathers, you know, not just providing for their families financially, but each day when they walk through the door and they ask about homework or practice or some detail in the lives of their children. And, you know, fathers continue to be important in the lives of their adult children. You know, after I got married, uh, my dad had one day off during the week. So he would have lunch with me that day. And I learned a lot um, from my dad. So as we continue on, we see in chapter two, verse nine, that Esther had won the king's favor. But Mordecai told her not to reveal the fact that she was a Jew. In his concern for Esther, every day, Mordecai walked back and forth in the courtyard, trying to find out how Esther was doing. And finally, the king made Esther the queen, and there was a royal banquet to celebrate. Chapter 2, verse 20 says, but Esther had kept the secret, her family background and nationality, just as Mordecai had told her to do, for she continued to follow Mordecai's instructions as she had done when he was bringing her up. But one day, while Mordecai was at the king's gate, he overheard a plot to assassinate the king, King Xerxes. And so he went and he told Queen Esther. And Esther passed on this information, giving credit to Mordecai. And after the story was investigated and found to be true, the two officials who had plotted against the king were hanged and the details were recorded in the Chronicles of the King. So on to chapter three and we meet another important character in the story and his name is Haman. Now the king had given Haman a position higher than any of the other nobles 
and all the royal officials would bow down to him. However, as a God-fearing Jew, Mordecai would not bow down to Haman. And um, the Bible tells us that Haman was enraged. So angry was he that learning that Mordecai was a Jew, he decided to kill not just Mordecai, but all the Jews throughout this entire kingdom. And that would be a lot of people. So Haman convinced the king to agree to annihilating all the Jews. And when Mordecai learned of this, he put on sackcloth and ashes and wailed loudly as he was mourning. And it, the scripture says that in every province, there was mourning among the Jews. Well, Esther's maids and eunuchs told her about Mordecai, and Esther, having no idea of Haman's plan, sent her eunuch to talk to Mordecai. And when this eunuch came back, he reported to Esther all that Mordecai had said to him about Haman's plan. And Mordecai urged her. Queen Esther, to go before the king and plead for her people. And Esther sent a message back reminding Mordecai that unless one is summoned to the king, if one goes before him and his golden scepter is not extended, they will lose their life. And Mordecai responds, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, oops, sorry. If you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. You know, I can't imagine how hard it must have been for Mordecai to send Esther into the king, you know, risking her very life. Yet somewhere along the way, Esther had witnessed the character of Mordecai. You know, children catch character from their fathers. And children catch it because, you know, they're always watching, always listening. And if you don't believe that, say one bad word within the hearing of your child and it will be repeated more times than you can imagine. You know, they might not listen um, to your lectures, but they're watching your behavior and how you deal with other people. So Esther sent instructions to Mordecai to have all the Jews in Susa fast and pray for three days. And at the end of that time, she would go before the king. And her courageous words, if I perish, I perish. So we read that on the third day, Esther dressed in her royal clothes, the picture of beauty uh, went before the king. And when the king saw her, he was pleased with her and he held out his scepter so she could go forward and the king asked her what she wanted up to half of my kingdom and it will be granted he said so she asked him to come to a banquet that day bringing Haman um, to a banquet that she had already prepared 
And at that banquet, as they were drinking wine, the king again asked Queen Hester for her request. And she once more asked him to come to a banquet with Haman that she'll prepare. Well, you know, Haman is an arrogant guy. He's more than thrilled that he has been chosen to do lunch with the king and the queen, not just once, but twice. But one thing that really gets his goat is that Mordecai will not bow down to him when seeing him at the king's gate. Everyone bowed, bows down to Haman, but not Mordecai. So he went home and gathering his friends and his wife, he boasted of his wealth and his position, but he says, you know what? All this gives me no satisfaction as I see that Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. So his friends and his wife suggested that he has gallows built. 75 feet high so that everyone would see and know how powerful Haman was. And then just ask the king to have Mordecai hanged on it, they said. Well, let's face it, when he asked the king um, to kill all the Jews, the king went along, right? So this suggestion delighted Haman and he had the gallows built. But as it would turn out, that evening the king could not sleep. So we ordered the chronicles, the records of his reign to be brought to him and read. I imagine that would put you to sleep. So as these chronicles were read, um, Mordecai's part in revealing the plot to kill the king was read. And the king wanted to know if Mordecai had received any recognition, you know, what honor had re he had received. And of course, nothing had been done for him. So waiting outside was Haman, you know, he wanted to get a jump on having Mordecai hanged. So the king brought Haman in and he said to him, you know, what? should be done for the man the king delights to honor. Chapter 6, verse 6. Of course, Haman, thinking that the king was talking about him, suggests that the man be given a royal robe that the king has worn, and that he ride a horse that the king has ridden. And the king thinks this is a great idea. And so he tells Haman to do this for Mordecai, the Jew who sits at the king's gate. So Haman led Mordecai through the city streets, proclaiming, this is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. And then Haman returns home and told his wife and his friends, not so confidently this time, just as the eunuchs come to get him for the queen's second banquet. Now, in chapter seven, we read that the king and Haman went to dine with the queen. And while they were drinking wine at the second banquet, the king asks his queen, what is her request? Up to half the kingdom, and it will be granted. In chapter 7, verses 3 to 6, we read, Then Queen Esther answered, If I have found favor with you, O king, and if it pleases your majesty, grant me my life. This is my petition. And spare my people, this is my request. For I and my people have been sold for destruction and slaughter and annihilation. 
If we had merely been sold as male and female slaves, I have would kept quiet because no such distress would justify disturbing the king. King Xerxes asked Queen Esther, who is he? Where is the man who dared to do such a thing? And Esther said, the adversary and enemy is this vile Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. And the king is so infuriated that he went into the palace garden to cool off. But Haman stayed behind to beg the queen for his life. And as Haman is begging the queen, he falls across the couch on which she's reclining. And at that time, the king comes back into the room. And as any man would with a wife so beautiful, he thought that Haman was making a move on his wife and the order was given for Haman to be hanged. Mordecai is later given the position of Haman and God's people are saved. You know, good fathers challenge their children to live a life for a purpose. While it must have been difficult for Mordecai to urge Queen Esther, the young girl that he raised, to go before the king, he saw the purpose God had for her. I remember my husband would tell our children that they could go anywhere that God called them to go. Um, and I didn't realize <laughs> that they would and that they would be all over. But, you know, there are three lessons that we can learn from the story in the book of Esther. First, never underestimate the providence of God. You know, some of us might have a Haman in our life, someone who just gets under our skin. Maybe they have no time for the things of God, but hang in there. You know, God is sovereign and the story isn't over. Second, never, in, never underestimate the influence of a good father. You know, as parents, we don't know what the future holds for our children. Dads, you need to continue to trust God to lead you each day for what your children need. <laughs> My father-in-law once told me that by the time our kids are 35, they start to come around. And at the time I thought, 35. <laughs> but you know, your words and your example are always important to your children. They don't need compromise. And there are certain things that only a father can say. And third, never underestimate the significance of a disciple. Esther was just a Jewish orphan when we met her and she became the queen of Persia. You know, some of us are from humble beginnings. We might even be that square peg in the round hole. But remain faithful to God. Don't bow to the Hamans of this world. Hear and obey God's call on your life. And when you feel as if God is sending you forward, go. Who knows if that's, a, if that's the reason God placed you where you are. So let's pray. God, we thank you for our fathers, our grandfathers, and those men in our lives, Lord, who have contributed to our upbringing, Lord, who have stepped up to the place to, uh, play an important role in our lives. We ask that you would continue to strengthen them and encourage them, Lord, for the work that they have to do. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, once again, happy Father's Day to the dads out there. 
and may God bless you and your family this week and keep you safe.